All right, HTP Pro Pulse 300. What's all the hype really about? Let's take a look through the menu and let's see what programs we have. Um, O23, 24, 25, Steel, Synergic, Non-Pulse, the same thing for O30. Then there's a program O30 with Pulse, O35, Regular MIG, O35 Pulse, O35 iCold Pulse, which is some new production pulse, fast deal, faster travel speed, less heat input, O45, uh, the regular Synergic MIG program, Pulse and iCold Pulse. And then there is 53, 56 programs with Pulse, without Pulse, uh, for thin material, the PAW, Precision Aluminum Welding, and uh, for regular material thickness, 035, 364, uh, 5554, for auto body work, 4043, in 035 and uh, 047, 364. And um, whoever knows the Pro Pulse 200 says, what happened to those double pulse programs? So we'll get to that in a second. Uh, stainless, 308, 316, which the 200 does not have. Silicon bronze, with and without pulse. Flux cord, gasless. Uh, dual shield in 035 and 045 and then some stainless dual shield program so let's get back to the pulse my personal favorite 4043 right now in this machine I'm running the larger size diameter so there's a precision aluminum welding and a pulse program which both are pulse and every pulse program on this machine, including the precision aluminum welding and the eye cold, has a menu at the end here, which tells you double pulse setup off, which means it's a regular single pulse. Standard is your double pulse, you know, from your Pro Pulse 200. And then a manual double pulse, which now lets you select your pulse frequency this is less pulses per second more pulses per second and then it also lets you adjust the um, pulse duty which is like the pulse on time the on time is this is your high pulse setting whatever your regular weld setting is whatever you're welding let's say here 400 inches a minute quarter inch material thickness predict 235 amp that's your high setting and in order to make your background setting you pick this number for your background um, this is really the background time not the background amperage voltage whatever you want to call it this is how long you stay on the high setting and how long you stay in the low setting here at like one hertz, it's one pulse per second. You're half a second in the low setting, half a second in the high setting. If I drop this down to 25, then I'm staying quarter of a second in the high setting and three quarter of a second in the low setting, which gives the puddle a really long time to freeze. This one here, your motor percentage, this relates to your wire feed rate wire feed rate on a MIG welder translates to amperage I guess on a synergic machine where your amperage, your voltage, your wire feed rate are all tied together see here the amperage is moving the wire feed rate is moving and the voltage is moving as I'm turning this knob so at this point I'm running 400 inches a minute if I go to Seventy-five percent of this that would mean my high settings is 400 inches a minute my low setting is 300 inches a minute so it will be on the high setting 235 amp on the background 175 amp the voltage changes accordingly with it so 
the more extreme I pick my motor speed, the more defined and pronounced I get the ripples here as far as what effect it makes. It literally, when you open the wire door, you look at it as you weld, it literally accelerates and decelerates the wire in sync. So now that this is selected, you see DP man, double pulse and manual mode. This is your symbol for the water cooler. I'm running a 10 foot water cooled MIG gun. And um, let's run a few settings. What I like to do here is, um, right now we're welding on quarter inch material thickness. So I'm gonna go up a little bit, about 400 inches a minute. And then when you pick really extreme double pulse settings, occasionally you need to add some voltage to it in order to have the right ratio because you're running so far out of parameter. So the background otherwise starts to, to have some crackling in it. I like my aluminum to weld without any crackle, just a straight up spray arc. There is different schools on this. I like it to not be crackly. So now let's uh, set up some aluminum and see what we get. Okay, sit on your jacket. And then Papa's gonna make another video, okay? Okay. That's good. So I have this ground clamp here. It says something about 500 amp or something on there with some one odd welding cable. Anyways, it comes off my engine drive. It has these solid brass jaws here and that brass pin and everything is nice and tight. But it does not have a copper strip. So a guy seriously tells me in the comments of another video that this ground clamp is no good because it's only conduct conducting half the amperage of what it should be conducting because the jaws are not connected. Think about this for a second. Okay. So I will make a pass welding here. This is the water cooled MIG gun anyways. And you hear the fan and the water cooler is on demand. Part of the reason why I have to have the voltage so high, the additional voltage is because this is an ice cold 70, 75 degree piece of metal on a half inch metal plate bench acting as a heat sink, sucking all the heat out of it. So the real reason is not that it's not all because of the extreme double pulse features, it's also because I have a totally cold piece. As the piece warms up, my additional voltage may only be like plus one or plus one and a half. Personally, I consider a volt up or down, maybe even to operator's preference. By the time you have to get into three or four volts up or down, typically something is wrong with your setup. Um, there's something binding in your gun, there's some something wrong with your tip, there's something wrong with the settings, you're in the wrong program, running the wrong wire, whatever your issue might be. But anything more than plus or minus two volts very rarely is what I consider operator's preference. So I'm in the 2T mode. I'm not using any form of remote control on here. No amperage slider, no nothing. No potentiometer to turn, no foot pedal. I will be welding. You will hear that the hot start time and the slope down time, if I have any selected, I'm not sure I do or not, is going to be single pulse. And the actual welding will be double pulse. The way how I have the parameters picked pretty extreme, you will hear the first one or two pulses at a different speed and intensity before it goes to what I've really selected to have a smoother transition. So you heard the crackle, especially in the background a little bit, because the material was really, really cold. 
Here you see the finished weld. The red bolts are not as pronounced as you would like them to be. So here's what I'm going to do in the next step. I'm just going to pick up the travel speed. No changes in any settings whatsoever. And as you can see here, this was a little bit too fast. You still heard some crackling, although the material warmed up a little bit by now. But you see the spacing of the ripples and those dimples left in the center there. It just shows you that the travel speed was way too fast this time around. Yes. Not yet. So here there was hardly any crackling in the background and the spacing looks real nice. The profile starts to come around now and also the gun angle was better. On the left, which is the back side of the weld, you see a lot less black soot than before because the gun was held a little bit straighter up. So here, stainless steel wire brush, doing a little bit of oxide removal. I actually did a, I participated in a class from Miller Electric on some um, aluminum welding and pulse welding and welding technologies and it was rather interesting to see what's all out there and they taught me some stuff about um, oxide layer on aluminum that I will share in a later video with you guys. That was a good one, yes. So apparently, I finally did a good weld here. So you see the one that I cleaned the material with the wire brush just briefly. I didn't go crazy on it and I didn't acetone wipe it. But you see the difference to the right side. About the same travel speed, the exact same settings. Similar material thickness. Yes, it got a little bit warmer with the fourth weld instead of the third weld. But that was not really the main part Hold here. On. Just cleaning the oxide layer helps a lot as far as consistency and bead appearance and penetration and all these good things. So aluminum does take a little bit of cleanliness. Say? So besides the gun angle being pretty horrible, you see a lot of black soot on the left side because the gun was just too shallow, it wasn't really perpendicular and then pushing forward it was kind of like shallow coming in a little bit too, too parallel to the material. But here we see why there is a factory standard double pulse where you don't have to pick any parameters. Like 90% of the time it will do the job, it will give you some texture, it'll look good and it'll have some It'll have some features still as far as a cooler weld, less distortion, uh, still good penetration. And it's just easy to pick, easy to set if you don't even know where to start on picking your own double pulse parameters. So that is the factory standard double pulse. You could also hear the frequency being a little bit higher and it pulsing a little bit faster. Here for comparison, single pulse, no double pulse features at all, makes a smooth bead, much like no pulse at all. Um, the bead appearance matches pretty much a non-pulse aluminum MIG weld.